You know, it's been a while since I've done a collage in this channel. So in this video, let's do that. We're gonna create a really beginner image, but the process is full of useful tips. I hope you enjoy. Hi everyone, I'm Oliver and welcome to Upstairs, a platform dedicated to architecture representation and visualization. If you're new around here, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Now before we get started with the video, I have a few things to say. You know that last week we launched the new Isometric Diagrams Masterclass, right? And we launched over a brand new platform. But unfortunately, for some reason, this platform wasn't accepting payments from people from a few countries. I've spent the whole week answering emails and trying to solve these payment issues, so we decided to move to another platform. It's very similar, I think you won't notice the difference, but hopefully there won't be any payment issues anymore. Now, we're gonna gradually move uh, the students from one platform to the other one, so if you're already enrolled in the course, we're gonna make sure that you have daily access to the course during this whole transition. I'm really sorry about the inconvenience, I wasn't expecting that, Unfortunately, these things we only discover once the course is published and live. So all that said, to let you know that the links will be in the video description for you to check it out, and we made sure to update the ones from the last YouTube video as well. And now, we can start this one. Alright, so this space was inspired by an architecture office that I follow on Instagram, links in the video description, but this collage process is for you to apply over any drafting image. You can draw it by hand, scan it, and then work in Photoshop, or use a basic 3D to export some lines. There are literally endless ways to get here, therefore our tutorial will begin after your lines are in place, alright? Alright guys, so we're gonna start with the flooring then. I feel it's the most important feature of this collage, so let's take great care of it. I'm gonna use a texture from the post-production texture pack, just drag into Photoshop and scale it down. We're gonna make copies of this texture to fill in the flooring area, just hold Alt and drag to the side. And then once enough copies are made, you can select them all with the Shift key and hit Ctrl E to merge them. And then you just have to repeat the steps upwards this time. Alright then, once the texture is done, we can right click on the layer and choose convert to smart object, so it's easier to handle it, and I always like to hit Ctrl J and create a backup copy for future needs. Now you can hit Ctrl T to bring up the transformation box, and holding Ctrl, you can drag the anchor points to match the flooring perspective. That's why it's so important to have the draft correctly then so it's easier doing the collage process. And since we're using a smart object, you can always come back later, hit Ctrl T on this layer and adjust the anchor points if needed. We wouldn't be able to do that if this wasn't a smart object, alright? Now that the main flooring part is done, we can make a copy of the backup with the shortcut Ctrl J and then fill in the baseboard area. Make sure to always hold Shift when resizing a texture, that way you maintain the proportions. And this step shouldn't be hard, you just have to make sure that the area is covered and then use a selection tool, I'm gonna use the, the rectangular marquee tool to make a selection and then select the layer and hit on the mask button to create a mask with that selection. And then you just repeat the steps for the other parts. Again, make sure to make a copy of the backup layer so that you always have a clean slate to work with. And don't forget to hold Ctrl to distort the anchor points to match the perspective that we have on the drawing. To make a copy of a layer, you can either hold Alt when dragging this layer or Hit Ctrl J to duplicate in place and then move it around. I'm gonna hit Ctrl T, right click on it and flip horizontal to fill in the other baseboard side 
without having to start all over again and redo the perspective steps. And then just to make this step easier, I'm going to merge these two layers together with the shortcut Ctrl E and then make one single mask for these two baseboard sides. And don't forget that we can always use the lines base layer with the magic one as selection guides to create selections. All right, the flooring and the baseboards are done. We can now group them together with the shortcut Ctrl G. And then I'm gonna create a new adjustment layer to restyle all of these textures all at once. Don't forget to check this option here to clip the adjustment layer to the layer or folder beneath it. And then we can just colorize it as we desire. I think I'm gonna go with the blue hue for this one. But as I always say, I'm only going to be sure at the end once I have the full composition done and I can compare the colors. Now, as you can see, some of these shapes have white fills and I made sure to fill with white during the drafting process so that we would have this contrast here. There are many ways to do this. I used Illustrator with the Live Paint Bucket Tool, but you can also use the Bucket Tool here in Photoshop. All right, then let's continue the process. I'm gonna create the railing wall now, the short wall, and I'm, and I'm gonna use the polygonal lasso tool for that, just to create the, sh the selection, and then you can fill in with any color. I'm gonna use a dark gray for this, but as I said, it doesn't really matter. We're gonna place a texture above it. Once the selection is done, you can hit Alt Backspace with the color to fill in the selection. Then drag in the texture that you wanna use, and make sure that this new texture covers all of the newly created shape area. You can scale it if needed. And then hit the shortcut Ctrl Alt G to clip this texture to the layer beneath it. It's the same thing that we did with the hue and saturation adjustment layer. Look, after working many years with architecture illustrations and visualization, I developed some workflows that allowed me to work non-destructively and I could come back and change and fix things if needed. This shortcut, Ctrl Alt G, is one example of it. It allows me to go back and forth with some changes without worrying about the textures being destructed or, be or getting pixelated. This also allows me to test out different results without having to rely so much on the Ctrl Z shortcut. Alright, next up, I'm gonna use the lines layer as a selection guide with the magic wand to make a selection of the cloth and then we can create a new layer and paint with the bright color. In this case, I'm gonna use the blue complementary color, which is orange, just to create contrast. But again, I'm only going to be sure at the end once I have the full composition done. Now, a cool trick you can do now is create a new layer and clip it below, then using black as the color and a very soft brush, create sort of a gradient to the bottom. You can make it strong, no problem, and then we change the layer mode from this black layer to something like soft light or overlay. You should test out different layer modes to see what looks best, but I think soft light here looks all right. And even reduce the opacity if you feel the need to do so. Organizing the file is key during any Photoshop workflow. You just have to right click on the eye and change the layer color and this also works for groups. Now we can go to the next step, which is the background. This one's a bit trickier, but I'll guide you through the steps that I took to create this composition. I used a vegetation brush from RK9's brush set. I'm gonna leave in the video description a link for you to get it. And then I just hand drew the shapes of the mountain one by one. Keep in mind that this is obviously according to the site and your project's location, so adapt the steps as you go. And I'm drawing this in black, but then once I'm finished, I hit Ctrl U to bring the hue and saturation adjustment layer to change the lightness and make this a bit lighter. And then we can just repeat the steps for the other mountains. Don't forget to make this new one on a new layer. And again, I'm using black as the color, but then we make it lighter using the Ctrl U shortcut. 
And one last time with an even smaller brush, we can make the last mountain. And don't forget to make this one even lighter. Alright, then over the mountain layers, we're going to overlay a paper texture. Don't forget to place it above the background folder and hit Ctrl Alt G to clip it below. And then we, we're going to take the saturation out and change layer mode to multiply. And don't forget that you can always come back to each individual mountain and adjust the lightness if you feel the need to do so. For the background, we're going to use another paper texture, this time a recycled paper texture. By the way, all of these textures were found on Google Images. You just have to search for paper textures and filter for bigger sizes and you should find plenty of results. There's also another website called Unsplash, I think you guys already heard of it. I'm gonna leave it in the video description. I think that's where I found these paper textures that, we, that I'm using right now. Alright, then next step, create a new layer and we're gonna add a sun. This is obviously for composition purposes. I'm just using a simple round brush with hardness set to 100 and simply left click once. Alright, as I said in the intro, this image is pretty easy to do. It's more about the composition than the actual techniques we're applying on it. But now I think we've covered all the things we needed to do on this image and we can add a cutout. You can download the free mixed style figure spec. I'm gonna leave a link in the video description. But we also launched a new collage cutout pack, 50 high quality PNG images and also vector shapes. I'm gonna leave in the video description for you to check it out. All the important info will be there, and if you like to create collages, I highly recommend taking a look. For this composition, I'm gonna use this girl. We first take care of the height and proportions, and then later we're gonna take care of the colors. For collages, I like to change the cutout's color to match the composition. For that, we can use the hue and saturation adjustment layer, and clip it below with the shortcut that I showed you, Ctrl Alt G, and change the hue. Obviously, we cannot affect the skin color, so for that, select the mask and hit Ctrl I. Then, using a simple round brush with white as the foreground color, paint over the areas that we want to reveal the effect, and make sure that you have the mask selected for that, alright? Don't forget that we're using an adjustment layer so that we work non-destructively. That means that if you need, you can double click on the effect to change the colors all over again. And the cool thing is that the mask stays the same, so we do this manual work one time only. It's not always that the cutout will match the perspective, but we can fix this by using the transformation box. First, we right click on it and rasterize the layer. Then with the selection tool, it can be the polygonal lasso tool, we make a selection over the area that we want to add it. Then since this layer is rasterized, we can hit Ctrl T to bring up the transformation box. I'm gonna just turn off the flooring so we can better see it. So Ctrl T again to bring up the transformation box, right click and choose warp. And then we can distort this foot until we get the correct perspective. Just make sure that the leg is lining up. And if you somehow couldn't line up the leg correctly, you can always come back later with the brush, pick the same color and fix it. All right, that's basically it. And now since we have worked non-destructively throughout this whole process, we can come back to the adjustment layers and some other layers to fine tune the colors and details until we get the overall composition that we want. Actually, you know what? I think there's one more thing we could add to make this composition look a bit better. On the background, we have the mountains fading away the further it goes, but we could add some trees over the first plane of the background. You can use realistic ones, no problem. I'll show you how to turn them into silhouettes. We're gonna place these trees inside the background folder so that it has the paper textures applied over it. But then we select both 
and create a group for the trees. And then above this group, we create a new layer and clip it below and fill that with a solid color. We can use black or I think for this composition, a dark gray would look better. And that's how we turn the trees into silhouette trees without messing with the original files. Now, you probably spot this before me, but then I saw that the railing wall top area wasn't properly masked out. So I created a mask on the background folder and using the polygonal lasso tool, uh, made a selection to mask it out. So when I started composing this collage, I wanted to have the edges broken down without being limited by the canvas. I often like to work this way, but as I progressed with this composition, I saw that it wasn't going to look that good. However, I still felt that the negative space would be really good on this composition. Therefore, in the end, I created these new layers to fill with white to hide all the mess that was behind it. But I still wanted to play a little bit with one of the edges, and I felt it had to be the edge from the floor to show that the floor continued and the space was bigger than I was showing. So I got these paper rips that I found online. I think if you google for paper rip transparent or paper rip PNG, you should find plenty of results. I'm gonna try to link a couple of them down in the video description for you. And there's no secret on the step, you just have to place it there and hide the excess parts. You can hide with a mask or painting with white. As you know, I always suggest you use masks. And after that, if you want to, you can repeat the steps to add a second layer of paper rip to make it a bit more dramatic. Alright guys, and that's basically it. This image took around 25 to 30 minutes to complete it. Again, as I said, it's not about the technical stuff, but more about the composition and how to make it look good. I got this space as a reference from an architecture office that I follow on Instagram. I'm going to leave all of that info in the video description as well. I wanted to show you some useful tips and tricks on collages. This one is an outdoor area, but the workflow here applies to basically any type of collage, alright? Now if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like, and if you like this content, subscribe to not miss out on future videos. Leave your questions down below and I'm gonna make my best to help you out. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!